I want you to close your eyes and imagine this. Let's say you want to go to the store and you want to buy an action figure. Probably to resell it and get even more money than it originally cost. Anyways, that action figure cost over $10,000! Now don't get it twisted, Geraldo is insanely strong. He has an ability for any situation. Because of his jack of all trades nature, he has a lot of upsides. I mean, he can fit into any strategy and still be effective. And today, I'm gonna give you tips to show how you can use him to his max potential. Along with telling you the one thing you'll need to master if you want to get really good with Geraldo. Now, granted, he's most likely not going to be the best in every strategy, such as in Cluster Bomb strategies or Water Monkey strategies, since those strats have heroes specifically to buff those towers. But he still can be effective, especially since he has some of the best utility abilities out of all the heroes, such as slowing down Moabs, Camo Detection plus Extra Range, Better Farming, Bloom Stalling, or literally getting $100,000 in just the press of a button. And he can contest with Benjamin for being the best hero farmer in BTD6. Not to mention he can also buff top pack banana farms to make them produce even more money than they already do. I could make a video discussing the two and say who's better at farming, but for now, let me know what you think. Who's better at farming, Geraldo or Benjamin? Speaking of using things, he can be a great choice in half cast since his items can provide cheaper solutions to problems such as camo detection, ceramic rushes, or just DPS in general. By the way, if you were thinking about getting the action figure in half cash, don't. I know I have it right now, but j I, I, I died. With all these upsides, you think that he has some downsides. And you are right. Kind of. A little. Okay. The thing about Geraldo is that, once again, since he's a great jack-of-all-trades character, he doesn't really have a weakness or a situation he's not at least decent in. We all know the classic, Gwen is weak to purple balloons, Sada and Pat are limited by range, Striker Jones and Brickle are mostly only useful when you're running their specific strategies, and Oban's weakness is literally everything. I guess one weakness is that he is a little worse in strategies that use lots of monkeys but don't also buff each other such as cluster bomb strategies, which I don't really understand why you'd be using anyone else than Striker Jones in those strategies anyway. But since he can also buff a limited amount of towers, it renders his camo detection potions or sharpening stones pretty much useless. Multi-lane maps can also be a pain if they don't have an intersection at some point for him to use Malstorm traps and glue. So the only situation that I'd say Geraldo is not good in is on multi-lane maps when you're running group tower strategies like cluster bombs or Plasma Monkey Fan Club. And even then, he still has action figure, rabbit, genie, chili pepper. Never mind, he's pretty much good in any situation. Or at least I can't think of a situation he's not good in. What about you, though? Can you think of a situation Geraldo isn't good in? Well, one thing that is true is that he can be pretty difficult to use properly. Your forehead has to be massive in order to use him properly, because you need to learn exactly when to use his items depending on the rounds and your strategy of choice. Because strategies such as Ninja Monkey plus Alchemist plus Sun Avatar don't really need as much support since they're really strong up until the later rounds. However, save up strategies usually tend to need a lot more support from Geraldo's items. Speaking of the items, Geraldo's items all serve very different purposes from each other, but are all really good when used in their respective situations. For transparency, I'm going to categorize all of the items into four categories and go from there. That being DPS, buffs, utility, and farming. The DPS category includes all of his items in which their sole purpose is to deal damage. Like his shooting turrets, which on upgrade 1 are similar to dart monkeys with their early game potential and DPS. And on upgrade 2, which is unlocked at level 13, can deal 7 layers of damage. I'd mostly recommend using the shooty turrets on straight line parts and maps where you can use the full pierce since this thing has a lot of it. However, on upgrade 2, you can kind of start placing a lot of these things if you have enough money since those 7 layer damage can be a pretty good help. Along with the fact that it doesn't even take up much space to begin with. It can also be a decent help at cleanup in the mid game, just like a stack of old nails which upgrades 2 times on level 13 and 16. On upgrade 1, it's more or less a stronger version of a spike pile. However, on upgrade 2, it gains 6 damage along with extra ceramic and fortified damage. And then on level 3, it deals 14 damage with an explosion similar to spiked mines. Use this for cleanup. That's pretty much it, honestly. You kinda just use it at the end of the track to just catch them stray balloons, you know. It's good at that.
Similarly, you can do that with the Blade Trap, which shoots a Maelstorm whenever a balloon passes over it, and has an extra upgrade on level 15 that shoots a mini Maelstorm instead. By the way, it only pops camos if Geraldo has a buff that allows him to pop camos, and will only pop leads on level 2. This is really good for dealing with ceramics, just like the Rabbit, which is a pet that needs to be bought 4 times in order to fully function. When you do get it 4 times, it deals lots of damage to anything in its path. And just like the genie bottle, it can one-shot ceramics. The genie's bottle spawns a little genie for two rounds that'll fly in an eight-figure pattern similar to a monkey ace in the middle of a screen and shoot when it gets close to a balloon. On level 18, this thing also upgrades to deal extra damage to Moab balloons. This guy is best used on difficult late game rounds such as 98. Geraldo, as you can see, has a lot of items catered to DPSing, but he also has a decent amount of items that buff other towers. The first one being Pickles, which buffs the damage of the tower that it's applied to, but also lowers its attack speed. Don't worry too much about whatever tower you apply it to, as long as your tower has a fast attack speed and shoots multiple bullets, they'll most likely benefit heavily from this. You can also use this on a crippled Moab Sniper too. Next on the buff list is his Camo Potion, which on Upgrade 1 simply just provides camo detection, but on Upgrade 2, which comes at level 14, it gives slight extra range and plus 1 damage to camo balloons. You can simply just use this whenever your towers need camo detection, but that plus 1 damage actually makes it so that you can use this to deal with camo balloons in general better, meaning that even if your towers have built-in camo detection, it can actually still be useful. And while this item is pretty straightforward, the sharpening stone is probably the most confusing item in Geraldo's kit. Like, why won't it work here? Are you fucking kidding me? The catch is that this only works on sharp type damage, meaning it will not work on bombs, fire, plasma, or any other attack. As for towers with multiple attacks, as long as one of those attacks has the sharp type damage, you can apply it. However, at the same time, the only attack that will actually get the damage bonus or the pierce bonus is that sharp attack. If that's still a little confusing, which I wouldn't blame you if you were confused, here's a quick little graph of the towers that can be buffed. I'm gonna leave this up for a few more seconds, but while you're using this time, why don't you go ahead and leave a like or subscribe, or just ask a question if you have any question down below. Anyway, the best part about this is that on level 15, it also gives extra damage to select a tower, even a tier 5 such as the Grandmaster Ninja or Elite Sniper. And whilst the Sharpening Stone can buff a wide range of towers, the Worn Hero's Cape is catered to buffing only one tower, Dart Monkeys. What this does is turn any Dart Monkey into a Super Monkey. This can actually be really helpful in Chimps mode to make use out of those Dart Monkeys that you can't even sell. And it's also cheaper than a regular Super Monkey. It can't go above the tier 3s, but let's be real, you're most likely just going to use the tier 3s anyway. So this can still be a very wise choice, just like the hot sauce that I'm not going to pronounce the full name of. What it does is create a little fire creature around your tower of choice which will shoot flames similar to the dragon's breath. It also inherits the buffs that are gained from these towers such as jungle drums. The only buff that it will not inherit is the alchemist brew. Anyways, on to the final buff, the paragon power totem. What this does is add extra levels to a paragon. This is the only way on solo mode to reach a level 100 paragon. If you meet all the other requirements to get a level 91 paragon, then you'll only need 20 paragons in order to get the level 100. That's pretty much it honestly, if you're planning to use these in free play, I also recommend farming to get his level 20 pretty quickly, so that way you can start placing totems as soon as possible. But with the buffs now out of the way, the utilities are the second to last thing to talk about, starting with the creepy idol, which scares the balloons back to the exit. This can give your monkeys a little bit more time to pop the balloons, just like a maso glue which will place a tube of glue on the ground that will slow down balloons and moabs. This is best for, well, slowing down the balloons for a time, because once it's used enough, it'll just go away. But while those items can slow the balloons down from getting to the exit, the rejuve potion helps you if the balloons do get to the exit by filling your lives back up. It also resets the ability cooldowns too. My personal favorite combo with the Rejuve Potion is probably the Sar Bobble because you can- Real quick though, I do want to ask, do you have a favorite Rejuve Potion combo? Well, it's also really good with other towers that rely more on their abilities like the Plasma Monkey Fan Club or the Lizard Lord Phoenix. Moving on from that though, we are finally onto his two farming abilities, that being the Quincy Action Figure and the Fertilizer. The rare Quincy action figure is a unique item that allows you to get tens of thousands of dollars if you play your cards correctly. When it's on the ground, every single round, it increases in value, with the value being multiplied by 1.1 on rounds 1 through 30, 1.05 from rounds 31 to 80, 
and every round after 80, it will multiply the value by 1.02. It can be a pretty good idea to wait until you have enough or close to enough money to immediately buy the action figure before you buy Geraldo, which will increase his price by a hefty amount, but it'll also make it so that you don't have to spend the entire early game trying to catch up to the price of the action figure. And while saving it to the end of the game to buy super mines may seem like a cool strategy, you really only need to save it until you can get those towers or tower that'll carry you through the rest of the game, such as the Apache Prime, Avatar of Wrath, Grandmaster Ninja, or a bunch of monkey subs. And while this item is more for instant gain, the fertilizer focuses more on money gaining in more a traditional way, that being banana farms. What it does is buff the value of the bananas that come out of your farms by 25% for 4 rounds. You might immediately want to use this on your banana tower, but if it's not upgraded to a banana plantation, then you might want to hold off since it won't be able to pay itself off until it is. It also can only be used on top path banana farms, meaning no banana banks and no marketplaces. Not sure why you throw fertilizer at a bank anyway, but with that we can finally move on to some strategies and tips. Like I said before, Geraldo doesn't really have a 100% concrete strategy he's fixed to since he can be pretty decent pretty much anywhere. He does the best in strats where he only has to buff one tower, such as the Grandmaster Ninja strategy, especially since the Chili can inherit the buffs that are gained for the Grandmaster Ninja. There's also actually a pretty cool strategy that you can do with Hero Capes. Basically, it's where you stack a bunch of Dart Monkeys next to each other, triple discount them with Monkey Villages, and put Hero Capes on all of them to get triple discounted stacked Super Monkeys. Just remember to place all the Villages in other buffing towers, such as the Alchemist, before you apply the capes, since once you apply the capes, the Super Monkeys will start to take up their normal amount of space. By the way, Omezo Glue is great for the early game and the mid game, but it should pretty much never be used in the late game that much because of how fast the mobs will just consume it. You know what can be used in the late game to stun mobs? The Creepy Idol. The Creepy Idol should pretty much always be used in the late game from the mob stunning potential at a price that doesn't really matter when you're getting like 100 coins a second. I usually recommend using Genie on round 98, that way it can help you take on the fortified DDTs that come after it and round 98 itself. By the way, the Quincy action figure's range does count as range for the monkey subs advanced intel. So uh, you know, use that how you will. Another thing, don't think that camo potions can just replace camo detection villages. Yeah, it might be cheaper, but you'll only be able to permabuff one tower. If you're curious on how to use pickles, then you can treat it like you're using the alchemist buff. Buff the faster shooting multi-projectile towers, and not the slow firing single projectile towers. You can easily spam the hot sauce on all your towers in the late game, which is especially useful in strategies where every tower is being buffed. It's also pretty cool to use it on ice monkeys, because instead of having to buy towers that will pop the ice layer, the hot sauce will just do it for you. Okay, I'm dubbing over this part because in the clip that I just figured this out, the audio is pretty bad. Apparently, if you get hot sauce with Icicle Impale and you hit a lot of balloons, it severely lags your game. Finally, it's time for me to tell you the best way to get value out of Geraldo. Planning. That's it. While obviously being easier said than done, planning is very essential to using Geraldo's items to their max potential. A great way to get better at planning is to think about the rounds that are specifically going to be a problem like 40, 63, or any other difficult round. And after that, think of a good solution to that round that works while also being the cheapest. Like maybe you can get rid of this round by using a blade trap, but what about using a maze glue instead which is cheaper and also restocks faster? You can also use challenge editor or sandbox mode to test out what works best for what rounds. Basically. While it is very important for every hero and just for balloons in general, if you're a planning genius, you're gonna go places with Geraldo. And if not, then you'll go places, just probably not to good places. And that's basically all there is to it, at least all I know about Geraldo. Before you go though, let me ask you one more thing. What is your favorite Geraldo item? Go ahead and leave your answer in the comments while I try to get my money back from buying this rare action figure that I found off of eBay.